Hello everyone. In some uh, previous videos, I showed you how to toggle a pin on the Freedom K64F, and we used an LED uh, connected to those pins, and uh, in that previous program, we basically just created an infinite loop, and it blinked it, uh, or it toggled that pin forever as fast as the, uh, the default settings allowed using the high-level processor expert code. In another video, I actually uh, showed the measurement of that signal, and it turned out to be just under 400 kilohertz, and uh, that's uh, that that's just fine and dandy. But what wh what we're going to do here is going we're going to control how fast that pin toggles, and we're going to do that with a timer interrupt. Uh, so let's go ahead and look at the circuit first. Um, just as just a review if you've seen the other videos but uh, we have a an LED connected uh, on an on a breadboard and the uh, anode of that LED is connected to J1 pin 4 and the cathode is connected through a current limiting resistor to uh, J2 pin 3 which is ground Now that current limiting resistor is 330 ohms uh, if we have a 3.3 volt signal, that means that we, we should be limiting current to 10 milliamps, and that should be, make things safe for the board. So let's go ahead and get into the code. Okay, here we are in the program that we wrote in a previous video, and all we really did is we created this one for loop, uh, and uh, that's, that's an infinite for loop, and we added this one line that calls this bit one underscore negval, which uh, toggles that bit one pin and uh, it, uh, and this will loop forever and we'll do it as fast as the program will allow with the uh, with the settings that we have and uh, what we're going to do in now if, if we wanted to uh, slow down how fast this toggles we could create a delay function uh, that just uh, just goes off and it, it sits there and iterates uh, for a set number of cycles to cause a delay but the, the downside of doing that is that the, the processor will be busy just going through the delay uh, and we won't be able to do anything else during the, the delay. Uh, by using an interrupt, uh, we'll be able to free up the processor to go do other things while we're waiting for the uh, interrupt to occur. Uh, so it's going to be real useful for us. Uh, so in, in uh, Kinesis Design Studio with uh, Processor Expert, um, our interrupt service routines are going to be in events.c uh, so that I have this open here and there's there's really not much here because we don't have much in program um, what an ISR is an interrupt service routine is basically it's just a, a set of instructions that executes when an interrupt is triggered and you'll see that we will add to this uh, here in a minute so let's go ahead, just go ahead and close those for right now and uh, Let's change our perspective to processor expert and uh, let's see component library uh, go to alphabetical and you want to find the uh, timer int um, component uh, this one right here okay so right click on that uh, and you can go help on on component and read through the help uh, I'd encourage you to do that, but I'm just going to add it to the project. You could also double click on it to do that. And there's going to be a few things that we need to uh, set up. Uh, one second here. Okay, uh, so let's go uh, change to component inspector uh, and switch to advanced so that we can name it. And I'm going to name it one sec. Okay, and as you might guess, it's, we're going to delay for one second, or we can just say 1,000 milliseconds. Okay, and there's uh, uh, different uh, here's the ranges that you can possibly set it to um, over here. And there are some limitations of what you can set it to and what you can make your allowed error be, depending on your, your clock settings. Uh, but this should work just fine for us. Hit OK. Um, and I don't think there's anything else that we need to set up and you can look through these um, but something that uh, we could generate some methods that we don't need to do that for this particular um, 
project. Uh, but under events, these will be the uh, interrupt service routines that will be generated uh, when we run, uh, when we build the uh, processor expert code. So you'll see that we have this on interrupt uh, method that's going to be called. And so every one second, this will get called. And uh, that's what we want to have happen. Um, that's about all we need to do there. Now to add this uh, new component to our project, there's two ways we can do it. I think I showed you last time. You can go up here, you can, you can right click on this and select generate processor expert code. There's a little bit quicker way to do it. You can just click this right here and that will generate the processor expert code. Okay, now let's go to this perspective right here. Uh, again, uh, open up main, and nothing really changed in main, uh, but uh, I'm going to show you in a minute if you look at uh, events.c. You can see we have a new uh, ISR here. It's called one sec underscore on interrupt. So we called the component one sec, and so it's one sec on interrupt. So uh, every one second, uh, this uh, whatever code we put in here will run. Now it's a generally a good idea uh, in your interrupt service routines to keep keep the code that runs in here at a minimum. Uh, you don't want this to be still executing the next time the interrupt occurs. So uh, what we're going to do is we're just going to go back to main, take that uh, bit one negval uh, command, uh, control X to cut it out of there and we're going to put it right in here okay and now we can build this and then we can debug And let me, while it's doing that, let me set up the camera so you can see this happening. Uh, the program that is uh, is running on it uh, before we uh, before we did this is uh, it was blinking as fast as we could. And uh, and then when we hit play here, uh, this is this new program is going to run. It's going to flash it on and off. Uh, it's going to toggle every one second. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, now you can see that the light is toggling. It's on for one second, off for one second, on for one second, off for one second. And uh, so that would give us a two second period. And so let's go ahead and move to the oscilloscope to see how accurate that toggle is. Okay, here you can see that uh, I've captured the signal uh, from that LED that's flashing, uh, showing uh, just over one period. Uh, and uh, since we're spending one second high and one second low, uh, the period should be about two seconds. And you can see that the oscilloscope has measured uh, 1.989 uh, seconds. Uh, so there's only uh, 11 milliseconds out of uh, two seconds. That's uh, pretty darn accurate. Uh, it shows frequency at 502.8 millihertz, or that would be about 0.5 hertz. Uh, so as you can see that uh, using that timer interrupt, uh, it was real easy uh, to get a good accurate timing to blink that LED. And another real advantage of doing it that way is that we can have our program go do other things uh, while it's uh, waiting for the next toggle. So that's really the advantage of using a timer interrupt rather than a delay function. So that's about it. Hope you liked this video. Uh, please subscribe and we'll talk again real soon.